Number nine, the position of a particle moving along a line is given by the S formula. For what values of T is the speed of the particle increasing? Okay, if we're talking about speed, I want to know what the velocity and acceleration are doing. Please remember, we just need to find our velocity and acceleration working together, or are they working separately? And the way that we do that, we want to look for um, the speed will increase if the velocity and acceleration have the same sign, and the speed will be decreasing if the velocity and the acceleration have different signs. Okay, so if I'm looking at this one, I actually need to find velocity and acceleration, and it looks like we have intervals, which means I need to do some charts. Okay, so to get the velocity, we're going to take the derivative of the position, which is going to be 6t squared minus 48t plus 90, and then I am going to set that equal to 0. And then I'm going to actually divide out a 6 from everything, so I'm going to get t squared minus 8t plus 15 equals 0. If I factor that, I'll get t minus 3, t minus 5. So my critical values are 3 and 5. So if I do a velocity chart and put 3 and 5 on it, if I plug in 2 into the velocity, I'll get a positive number. If I plug 4 in, I'll get a negative number. And if I plug 5 into the velocity, I'll get a positive number. All right, so that's what the acceleration is doing, the velocity is doing. Okay, acceleration would be the derivative of velocity, which is going to be 12t minus 48. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'll find out that t is equal to 4. Okay, so if I do an acceleration chart, all I need to do is put 4 on it. So I'm going really crooked here, sorry about that. Um, I'm going to put, uh, if I put 3 in to the acceleration, I'll get a negative answer. If I put 4 in, I'll get a positive answer. And then from there, now I just need to decide where are the acceleration and the velocity working together. So I can see um, this one is all the way until 4, but this one starts at 3. So I can tell between 3 and 4, the acceleration and the velocity are both negative. And then, um, is there anywhere they're both positive? Um, this one starts being positive at 4. This one starts being positive at 5. So for sure, any value after 5, they're both um, positive. So those would be both the places where the speed would be increasing, which is choice E. All right, problem 10. Find the integral of x minus 1 times the square root of x. All right, this was, is going to be one that we are just going to need to distribute and then get an answer. The first thing that I'm going to do before I do that is make this x to the 1 half, and then I'm going to distribute. So if I distribute, I'm going to get x to the 3 halves because we add our exponents, and then it's going to be minus x to the 1 half. And I can take the integral of each one of those separately. If I add 1 to this power, that will be x to the 5 halves with the reciprocal out front, and then add 1 to this one. I'll get x to the 3 halves with the reciprocal out front, and then I just need to add my c. And when I do that, I notice the one that matches is choice d. All right, 11, find what is the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared minus 4 over 2 plus x minus 4x squared. Okay, I'm going to be comparing the degrees in the numerator and the denominator. I notice the highest one up here is x squared. This highest one down here is x squared. So since they are the same, we are going to take the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if we take the ratio of the leading coefficients, that will be 1 over negative 4, which was choice B. All right, 12. The figure above shows the graph graph of y equals 5x minus x squared and the graph of the line y equals 2x. What is the area of the shaded region? Okay, area equals. We need to find it for sure. It's going to go from 0. We need to figure out where these two intersect, and this is a non-calculator problem, so I'll just have to set them equal to each other. So 2x equals 5x minus x squared. Um, to solve this, I will get it set equal to 0. So I'll get 0 equals 3x minus x squared. I will now factor out an x. So I notice that my zeros will occur at 0 and 3. So those would be, um, it's going to go from 0 to 3. And then from here, I just need to, if I draw my line again, it's just going to be top minus bottom. So the top is going to be the curve 5x minus x squared minus the bottom. The bottom is going to be the line 2x. 
and then just dx. Um, we get to actually evaluate this and we don't get to use our calculator, so we'll get 0 to 3. If I combine like terms, I'm going to get 3x minus x squared, and I can go ahead and take the integral of each one of those separately. The integral of 3x is 3 halves x squared minus the antiderivative of x squared is 1 third x cubed, and I get to evaluate it at 3 and 0. Okay, if I plug 3 in, I will get 27 halves minus, if I plug 3 in here, I get 9. And then minus, if I plug 0 into each of those, I just get 0. Okay, so getting a common denominator, so it would be 18, 27 minus 18 is 9 halves, which is choice B. Right, problem 13. If y equals 5 plus the integral from 2 to 2x of e to the negative 2x squared t squared dt, which of the following is true? All right, I'm not sure exactly what they want me to do with this problem, but I do notice all the choices. They tell me dy dx, so it's obviously they want me to take the derivative of this, so that is what I'm going to do. All right, the derivative of 5 is just 0. If I go to take the derivative of an integral, um, remember those just cancel out, so I'm just going to get what's inside. But remember, what we always do is replace the t with whatever variable is up there. So it's going to be e to the negative 2x squared. And then don't forget, um, since this is 2x, we actually have to take the derivative of the 2x, which is 2. So if I clean that up a little bit, it's going to be 2e to the negative. 2x, when I square it, will become 4x squared. And so that will be my derivative. And so if I'm looking at all of my choices, I notice that D is a possibility and E is a possibility. All the other ones are not possibilities at all. And now I just need to figure out which one of those, um, if I plugged, now it's telling me that Y of 0 equals 5 or Y of 1 equals 5. So that's telling me if I go back into this original equation, if I go into this original equation right here, which one, if I plug in, um, 0 or 1 in will give me an answer of 5. Well, I notice that I already have 5 as an answer here, so this part is going to have to equal 0. So will plugging in 0 give me 0, or will plugging in 1 give me 0? And I notice that if I plug in 1, notice if I plug 1 in, and this is going to be the integral from 2 to 2, and we all know that an integral from 2 to 2 is just going to equal 0, so this choice E is the choice that we're going to get to choose. Right, problem 14. Which of the following is a slope field for the differential equation dy dx equals x over y? Okay, please keep in mind that dy dx, they're just slopes. So we want to see slopes happening at different places. And what I decided to do on this one is just kind of see what's going on. All right, I know that there's going to be when x equals 0, there will be a slope of 0. So all my little lines will have slopes of 0. When y equals 0, the slope will be undefined. And then I just kind of started looking at things. Um, I noticed that at the point 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, la di da, I'll get a slope of 1. And then also at negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, that will also give me a slope of 1. And then just a couple other things I kind of look, I'm just looking for patterns before I even look at the graphs. Um, I know if they're opposites, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, those will give me a slope of negative 1. And then if I did the opposite, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3, those will also give me a slope of negative 1. So notice I haven't even looked at the pictures. I'm just trying to look for what kind of pattern should I see. All right, so are there any I can just cross off right now? So I know at x equals 0, I need to see a slope of 0. B, definitely no. Um, I see a slope of 0 on that one. Um, nope, not on A. And I see a slope of 0 there, and I see a slope of 0 there. Okay, so we've checked that one. Okay, y equals 0, having a slope that's undefined. Um, it looks like that one's undefined. I think that one is, and I think that one is, so that didn't really help me. Okay, so now at the points 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, I should see slopes of 1. So if I look at this one, if I have, here's 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, those definitely don't have slopes of 1, so I just get to be done with that one. Um, here, let's see, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. I notice that my slopes are getting steeper, so that I don't see like that natural pattern going on. So C can't work, so I'm already down to D, but I just want to show you. Notice how I'm seeing these consistent lines right here. 
and that's just showing me 1, 1, slope of 1, 2, 2, slope of 1, 3, 3, slope of 1, negative 1, 1, slope of negative 1. So this one totally fits the pattern, so it must be choice E. All right, number 15. Particle moves along a straight line with a velocity V equals 3E to the negative 2 um, over T, sine of 2T, meters per second. What is the total distance in meters traveled by the particle during the time interval 0 to 2? Well, I know total distance traveled is the interval from 0 to 2 of the absolute value of velocity. So it's just 0 to 2. Absolute value of velocity is 3e to the negative 2 over 2 sine of 2t. And that is pretty much it. We're going to let Math 9 do all the work for us. And if we let Math 9 do the work for us, we'll get 2.261. We are into the calculator section now, just FYI. So we are going to choose choice D, and that's all there was to it. Number 16, a city is built around a circular lake that has a radius of one mile. The population, so we've got this lake, and the radius is one mile. All right, um, and then a city is built around the circulate or like so we've got a city happening around lots of buildings stuff like that going on around the lake okay the population density of the city is f of r people per square mile where r is the distance from the center of the lake in miles which of the following equations gives the number of people who live within one mile of the lake all right so i know that my answer needs to be number of people so that's where i'm headed I noticed that if I just used f of r, um, this is going to be people per square mile. So if I took the integral of just f of r, that would bring me back to people per mile, and I'm supposed to have number of people. So I'm guessing that r is going to have to do something with it. If I take f of r times r, notice this is going to be people per mile squared times miles. And notice that one of the miles is going to cancel, so f of r times r will end up giving me people per mile. So if I take the integral of people per mile, that will give me back to people. So that's how I know that I want to take f of r times r. Now you'll notice that we have two choices. We have a and d. And one thing I'm not concerned about the 2 pi where it came from because they all have 2 pi, so great. Um, from here, I need to decide should it be 0 to 1 or 1 to 2. All right, if you'll look at this, I want to know um, the people living. So they the people start here and end a mile out. So it's not going to be at 0 because if it was at 0, they'd be in the lake. So outside of the lake, it's going to start with the radius of 1 and go out to a radius of 2. So that's why it is going to be option D instead of option A.